Flash floods here in the Texas desert are brutal. They keep washing out the only road to get to my ranch. No access, no supplies, no building my desert forest. Today I'm sourcing $2,000 pieces of concrete for free. These are some of the few rocks that survived my last attempt at I'm desert flood control. I've made the wall so thick. Each of these stones weighs well under a thousand pounds, and the more something weighs, the better it does fighting floods. This thing weighs at least eight times more and has a much larger surface area. We of course had to figure out how to unload it safely, but before that was even a problem, how did we get a $2,000 piece of steel reinforced concrete for free? David in the UK is a super viewer. He really wanted to participate in dust ups from his home. How do you do that? After sending me some ideas that look good on paper, a bunch of free lumber, but the two hour drive each way would cost more in gas than the value of the materials. So I asked if it would be okay if he followed a specific task. Would you be willing to call precast concrete companies across El Paso and see if you can't find us some leads for some free waste concrete? It wasn't that hard. I don't know how many emails he sent out, maybe five or 10. It took a couple of weeks because obviously we're pretty low priority, but David found us the supply. All we had to do was go pick it up. David's just one example of viewers like you shaping the dust ups journey. I did not come up with this precast concrete idea all on my own. That came from viewers that watched the last episode about trying to control the floods in this canyon. And I remember a comment from an army combat engineer suggesting that we scalvage whatever heavy things that we could find. And a few viewers in Australia explained the idea of low ford crossings or low water crossings. Thanks to David and the viewer comments, here's what we found. It's always concrete. Come on down. The intact forms like the ones you saw loaded on the flatbed are easy to estimate the volume and weight. But with these broken forms, we aren't really sure how much all of this weighs, so we decided to play it safe and stay well under our weight limit. There's a piece stuck in there. If you think about it, bags of concrete are about 80 pounds a bag. And these are much larger. So each one of these is several hundred pounds. if you can see that but I'm going wide open right now this truck cannot go any faster and I'm doing 32 it, oh, oh, oh. It's coming on up almost at 35 miles an hour but I have it to the floor
Doesn't look like much, but that's a lot of weight of concrete and some dirt. Trailer's a whole lot happier right now, but I still got this several thousand pound piece to unload. The hardest part about dealing with all this concrete is that I don't have a forklift, an excavator, a teller handler, or really any heavy equipment that can lift material like this. We have to make our own loading ramp so that we can use the one tool that I do have that will work, a bulldozer. It's not the cleanest process, but we back the truck up as close as possible to a high spot. We use material to close the gap, and then we drag the heavy thing off the truck with the bulldozer. We are unloaded now. Now time to uh, disconnect everything. But as of right now, she is unloaded. Wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be uh, a little bit more difficult. I do hope we can get a couple jersey walls to put across here and I can make an actual loading ramp. But again, this will make do for, for right now. It's kind of an obvious question, but the next thing to think about is, well, how many of these forms do you need? I'm not trying to calculate the exact distance because I don't even know the exact size of the forms I'm gonna get. They're free, it's whatever they feel like giving me. I just wanna get an idea for how much concrete do we need to span this distance. 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, two. So it looks like I need about 82 paces worth of concrete. I'm gonna ballpark that at around 150 to 200 linear feet. That is a lot of concrete for a guy in the most isolated spot in Texas. I am 38 miles down a dirt road from Sierra Blanca, population 600, which itself is an hour from El Paso. The total driving time with a normal vehicle from El Paso would be about two and a half hours with a fully loaded International 4300 and a dump trailer, more like three and a half. This only makes sense because Daniel regularly drives back and forth from El Paso, his home, to the ranch. And I'm already paying for the gas with the 4300 for that commute. I calculated I'm only spending an extra 20 to $25 in fuel in order to haul out all this weight. $2,000 piece of concrete, all we gotta do is pick it up and it cost me $25 in fuel to get it. And we probably need to do 50 or 60 of these trips, I think, to really fill up the canyon. It's a lot. And also we have another complication, the weather. It's not just obviously when it rains, it's the season that it rains. This ranch gets 12 to 14 inches of annual rainfall, but up in the mountains, which this canyon drains, they get well over 30. And it all tends to come at the same time. Sometimes this whole valley, the 38 miles of dirt roads that I have to get to, the roads are in terrible shape about four to five months a year. That makes for a hauling season. 
There's a time where we have the big truck and the heavy equipment to haul out concrete blocks or manure when it's available, and we have to prioritize whatever it is that we can get. From now until the first rain, which could be realistically that might cause flooding maybe in May, but probably June or July, that's what we're gonna do every single week. We're bringing out just a little piece of concrete and getting a little bit better at a time. It feels overwhelming. I would love to button this up and have it be a finished project, but we'll just pull it out as it comes available, make one little section nice. We'll do the best we can. The most common suggestion from viewers was gabions or basically big check dams. If you're not familiar what a gabion is, it's a cage full of rocks. It's the same idea as a check dam, which is a pile of rocks, just without the metal cage. And the idea is if you build a wall and you have flood water that's full of sediment, full of gravel and full of big stones, well, when you slow the water down, all of that sediment and the rocks, they drop and you'll form a shelf. By adding a wall of concrete all the way across this canyon, we'll have a nice smooth flat surface. Now, this isn't going to be a dam. It'll be a little bumpy. It's not gonna be a paved road, but it will be dramatically better than the little chasms that we have to cross after every flood. When Daniel took a tour of the concrete facility, I had some ideas beyond just flood control. These forms are defective. There's a reason they're giving me $2,000 pieces of concrete for free, but they still have very strong structural integrity. I could drive my bulldozer on top of that block over there. These forms are designed to be buried. And in my soil, the average annual temperature is 72 degrees. I'm in a desert. It gets awful hot in the summer. What's a small dedicated room that I might put in some of those blocks that I really want to keep nice and cold? Now, this is the cylinder that Daniel unloaded. Daniel also managed to score this free fuel tank and it is in really good shape. It just has a leak through a port in the bottom that we need to plug. And then we've got the bigger challenge of figuring out how to get that up in the air. So it's elevated and we don't have to have pumps in order to fill up the bulldozer. It's one less thing to go wrong. But this thing is the reason we're here. And it gave me an idea. A form like this is designed to be buried. If we dig a trench and we stack this vertically, this is a great air intake. It's gonna function as an air plenum where there's naturally cool air already available. And if we drill a hole through the side and we stack just one more cylinder on top, we can bury this thing for up to here. So it's about almost three feet tall. Maybe it, this is three feet tall, maybe four if you include this. So if we get just one more, we could bury that five or six feet deep where the air is not quite 72 degrees year round, but really close. Basically, if we intake air through here, build some earth tubes like the ones that I built near the kitchen and which collapsed, I will not use HDPE again. I'll use straight PVC so I don't have to worry about the weight load. And even though I capped it in concrete, that will connect to two gorgeous forms that Daniel found that could be stacked one on top of the other where we can host our electronics. It's now a week later and we have a new batch of concrete on Daniel's latest trip. Each one of these trips gets us one step closer to getting the floods under control. Howdy, howdy. How's it going? Good to see you. Long drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that engine sounds awesome though. I could hear it going down the road. Just... <laughs> yeah, I, I try to keep it as low as I idle as I can. Or you yeah, know, just because fuel. Yeah. As we unload this concrete, it's become clear to me that I way overestimated the number of trips. Holy cow. That's terrifying. Yeah, I would step back a little bit. 
Well, it's mostly intact. Each of these rectangular forms is about eight yeah. feet long. Yeah. Remy, you need to say, that Sean. Like, you know what that means. Yeah. Remy. Yeah, you Remy. don't know me. Remy. Remy, come. Remy, come. Good boy. Good boy, Remy. Good boy. Sit. Remy, sit. If we're able to continually source forms that are roughly like that, then we're only gonna need 14 total trips, and we've already done two. Good boy, Remy. That's loud, huh? Good boy, Remy. You're clear! That means only 12 more trips to complete that entire stretch. I think that's something we can do before the rainy season next June, but it's a matter of time before the floods come back. And to get a strong sense for just how bad the flooding in this canyon can get, check out this episode.